Urban Survival Part 2. Oh, here we go. It's a showdown between Geminis. Someone's going down, but it ain't going to be me. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brooklyn Prepper. All right, I'm going to continue with the Urban Survival for newbies. The newbies. Benjamin, everybody. Let's hear it for Benjamin. He's a good guy. Anyway. I'm going to continue with the Urban Survival Part 2 uh, for the newbie, alright? Like, uh, I said to you in my first video, I'm going to go real slow and real simple things to get started, right? I'm not going to make you go crazy in the beginning, you know? Don't worry about pulling your hair out and having all kinds of survival and end of the world pals when they right? We're going to start nice and slow, alright? So what I, what I had laying around my house... I came home the other day and there was four bananas that were almost going bad. What have I done? Never again, never again will I let this happen. So anyway, those bananas are going bad. Let me show you what I do with them and uh, how to make some banana chips, how to make some apple chips, and how to make some nice little survival packages, right, for emergencies, not the end of the world, right, for real cheap. And it's really simple. All right, let's go. Hey, no need to cry over old bananas, right? These are dull organic bananas that we have bought and we left them out. We were doing so many different things. They sort of browned out before we got a chance to eat them. So I could do a couple of things with this. With this. I either get to throw them in the blender and make a nice little power drink with them or what I'm going to do is they're old, right? I'm not going to throw them away. This is where I'm trying to teach you guys how you're going to save money, conserve, and everything. And even the old stuff, normally a lot of people would throw it away. Oh, this banana is real bad. I'm going to show you how to make some apple chips with it. It's really, really simple. You can put it in your dehydrator like I, we spoke about the tools of the trade of the, on your way to being prepared. I said apple chips. Oh, I said apple chips? I said apple chips. I meant banana chips. What are you, a banana? All right, that's why she's the boss. All right. All right, I'm going to show you how to make some apple chips. Like I said in my other video, I said apple chips again. Let me show you how to make banana chips, all right? The non-apple chips, the banana chips. Thank you. All right, guys, it's quite simple. The first thing you're going to do, you're going to peel your neglected banana. All right, so... You know, you might have some really, these ones are really neglected. I'm a bad banana parent. All right, these are pretty soft, right? But they're still good to, for making chips, right? So what you're going to do before you put in your, my, uh, your, uh, your dehydrator, you're going to cut thin slices. It's as simple as that. You want to try to get them like, I think that's cool, right? Because uh, the dinner you make them, the, the less time it takes to dehydrate. But I usually just get them like that. Uh, you see what I'm talking about there? The thickness. I hopefully it zooms in or whatever. Or you're able to see it good. All right. So we're going to cut all these bananas up. And then I'm going to lay them out in the trays. Very simple. And then we're going to make the banana chips. Right? But I'm going to show you what to do with them too. How you can incorporate these, these, these decrepit banana. You can make into some... Some... Uh, some survival food, you know, for emergency and everything else. So you can have some, some chips laying around. You can take it lunch with you and everything. But you also can incorporate it into some of the packs I'm going to show you how to make. All right. So let me show you how to make a couple of these little packs. All right. Let me keep on cutting the banana up. 
right? You can't, like, if your bananas are hard enough, you could use your slicer, but since, uh, since these are so uh, soft, you're going to have it to, to do it by hand. All right? <clears throat> there you go. I got my apples all, <clears throat> my apples. I keep on saying apples. Apples, right? Banana apples, banana apples. Anyway, I got my bananas all spread out on my trays, right? I, got, I still got a few more bananas I got to cut up. But what I'm going to do is since I'm running the dehydrator, as I'm doing the bananas, I'm going to slice up some of my uh, apples um, on my slicer and run them in the dehydrator at the same time. So since it's going, I'd as well throw a bunch more stuff in there anyway. So I'm going to make some apple chips too and banana chips. Apple, banana, apple, banana. All right, there you go. I'll show you how to slice it up. All right, guys, so I got a, a few apples. I'm just showing you real fast. I got a few apples. I put it on the uh, the lowest setting on my slicer right here. There's another fancy name for this slicer. I forget what they call it. I think a mullet or something like that. I don't know. A, 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 a mullet. All right, anyway, this is what I have. I have my slices. I cut them thin, right? You take your apples. I cut them into little uh, quarters, right? And you put them on your little uh, slicer, and you start slicing, right? The slicer comes with a safety mechanism that you use to slice with okay so oh I just dropped one of my apples All right so I, I suggest you use the safety mechanism when you're doing it you know unless you're a pro like I am All right but anyway use the safety things you're not comfortable with the uh the mullet <laughs> all right to cut your apples anyway when you slice apples you want them thin Right, takes less time to dehydrate, and that's what I get, and I get nice apple chips out of them. See, it's simple. I'm going to show you guys that you don't got to be a scientist to do all this stuff. It's simple. Let's get started. Make yourself your own emergency food. Okay, there's my uh, apple chips. We're all ready to go into the dehydrator. There they go. They're really sliced thin. I like them nice and crispy. Right, you might get some browning as you're waiting to put the trays in. You could avoid that if you sprayed them with lemon juice or something like that. Me, I really don't care. They still taste the same. They still have the same nutritious value. They might be a little brown. I don't mind it. But you can spray them with some lemon juice or whatever, and it stops the browning process. Oh, before I forget, and for you tech guys out there, uh, the fruit, you put, you're going to uh, put it on 135. I don't know. Anywhere from 12 to 20 hours, right, uh, to dehydrate everything correctly, right? You open up once in a while, you check it out. As long as they're nice and crispy, they're done. Don't worry about it. I have left things in for 24 hours sometimes, right? They're still the same, right? Don't worry about overdoing it too much. You don't want to keep it in there for days, but don't worry about overdoing it either. But as long as they're crispy, that's what you want, nice and crispy. All right, guys, here we go. I got my banana chips. Right, they came out nice and crispy. I got my apple chips, right? And I'm going to show you how to use to make a, a nice little breakfast pack out of this. We're going to use the apple, the bananas, some oatmeal, and some sugar, and of course some powdered milk. All right, so that's what I got here for breakfast. And I'll show you how to make a nice little coca drink. And over here, this is optional. I like this stuff. This stuff is called green stuff. Right, and you mix it with some water. It's always good to throw into your diet because it's a bunch of raw organic vegetables. You mix with water, you drink it down, so you always have all those nice veggies in your system. Right, so I'll pack up a couple of these too and then add them into a box. Right here, I'm going to show you like a little dinner you can make. You got you got rice, you got lentils. Lentils got plenty of protein in it. You got rice as a filler, and I got some chicken broth. I bought this pack of rice. It's five pound bag. Two lentils and these two boxes of chicken bouillon. I got them for about, I think it was seven something, eight bucks, right? At the store. So I'm going to show you this for eight bucks, how many packs you can make out of just an eight bucks thing. You can make a bunch of them. I'm not going to show you making more of them. I'm going to show you one, but you will be able to make quite a few packs out of this. And, uh, like I showed you in, uh, my, my first video, it makes a nice little portion, right? Once you're done. Okay, so let's get started on a, a little breakfast pack, right? And I got, and of course, we got the vacuum seal in the background. For this project, 
right? We're not going to use the long bags, right, for the vacuum sealer. We're going to use the short bags, right? And also, we're going to use some Ziploc bags. And I'll show you in a minute why and explain everything to you as I go along. All right? Like I said, guys, this is quite simple. Don't get nervous. I guarantee you can do this in seconds, right? It's just about getting some survival food, some emergency food, put away on the side for your family, just in case of a disaster. So let's dig in. <clears throat> okay, guys, this is it's just how simple it's going to be. I got my Ziploc bags, right? So I'm going to open one of them up, right? One cup of oatmeal, right? Makes you a nice amount. You know, don't go worry if you spill a little bit like I did, right? I got one cup of oatmeal, right? I take another baggie. I take a nice teaspoon of sugar, okay? If you want to add a little bit more sugar, you know, you can put two teaspoons of sugar, right? And another baggie. And I'm going to open up another baggie. Okay. And I got some powdered milk. With the powdered milk, I usually go about, I go about maybe a nice three spoonfuls of powdered milk. Okay. There's another one. There's another one. Okay, now I got my powdered milk, I got my sugar, I got my oatmeal. I'm all ready for breakfast. Now, to add a little bit more spice to it, I'm going to turn here, and I'm going to grab some dehydrated bananas. There's a couple of spoonfuls, you know, and I'm going to grab myself some banana chips. All right? You don't got to put too many in there. And I got myself some banana chips. Just to throw in with the oatmeal, get a little bit of fruit also. All right, and you're going to seal all these bags up. This is how simple it is. I can't even waste time just blabbering right now. All right. Now, what you're going to do, you set yourself, you make a nice little station up. Right now, I'm a little awkward right now because I'm trying to film it for you guys. But you set yourself a nice little station up, get the family involved, and everybody has a job filling some bags up. All right, now you got your Ziploc baggies already. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. Okay. Get that back there. I got my... My dehydrated milk, my oatmeal, some sugar, and my little couple, some fruit. All right, what I'm going to do now, right, the Ziploc bags, you want to punch some holes in them. Right, punch holes in the Ziploc bags. You know, so just punch holes in the Ziploc bags. The reason for that, when you put these bags inside the vacuum seal bag, right you can suck all the air out of these bags too so don't forget to punch holes in your little uh, ziplock bags also make a few holes with a fork right and you just could stab them up like that all right guys i hope i'm getting this on the film here and that's that i got some holes stabbed up in there so now all when when the vacuum bag it's sucking all the air out. It was sucked the air out of these bags too. All right, so let's get a little, let's get a little bag going on here. I'm not gonna make these bags too big. Just enough to fit all my supplies in that I have right here, all right? Because you want to save space, all right? There we go. I'm gonna put them here and heat the edge up. I'm gonna seal one bag. Okay. You forgot about the pickle juice bag. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no pickle juice bag, son. There you go. Get rid of that. Drink it. All right, here it comes. It's sealing up. Okay. Now we got the bag sealed on one side. I'm going to add all our stuff to it. It's that simple. All right. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with showing you putting all this stuff in there. All right, guys, I got everything in my uh, my Ziploc bag. I got my milk, I got my sugar, I got my uh, my oatmeal, and I have some fruit. All right, the reason why you're going to put them in Ziploc bags, 
what it does, it prevents your vacuum seal bag from getting punctured. It's just adding more armor to your supplies, right? It helps with, especially the, the dehydrated fr uh, fruit, it gives it a little bit more like a safety net that it doesn't puncture through your vacuum seal bag. All right, guys, so let me vacuum this up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, there you go, guys. Vacuum seal, ready for a million years of storage. All right, so like I said, make sure you use Ziploc, Ziploc bags. It, it helps protect the uh, food saver bag from getting punctured, especially when you're using rice or, or like dehydrated stuff because they can be pointy and sharp, all right? And plus, it keeps all the ingredients separate. So when you're ready to make it, you can make you a little bit of milk with some water. You could uh, boil your oatmeal up in, the, in, uh, in some water. And then you add your sugar, and then after it, you throw your dehydrated fruit in there, and it starts to soften up, and you've got a powerful breakfast. Now, is that hard? Go ahead, answer me. I'm waiting. Now, is that hard? So don't get, don't get full of anxiety over preparing for hard times. It's just a smart idea to have some food put to the side, and it's cheap. Okay, and along with your breakfast, and here's something really fast you can whip up to, all right? Let me show you how fast and easy this is. Alright, you're going to take a nice spoonful of cocoa powder. Alright, we got that. You're going to take two big spoonfuls of powdered milk. Let me get this going here. There you go. Let me get another one in there. So you get your cocoa. You got your milk, right? And you're gonna take a nice spoonful of sugar. Join any end of the world situation when you make this drink for your kids or whoever hunkering down to your house or all your neighbors are hanging out outside. You break out with a couple of these packs. Cocoa, hot cocoa in the middle of a End of a world situation? You're the hero. You're the man. All right, guys, let's move on to dinner. I seal one side of my bag already. I got my, I put a, one cup of lentils. One cup of rice. Mix that all together. Put it all in the same bag because when you're going to cook this, you're just going to boil it all in water until it all gets ready to eat. Right? I got two two of uh, chicken bouillon right from the boxes I bought. Like I said, eight bucks. I can make a ton of these things. But I'm going to take a Ziploc bag, like I did before, right? And I'm going to put my bouillon things in my Ziploc bag. And what I'm going to do is seal it up, and the same thing. I'm going to punch some holes in it, right, because I want to get that air out of there also, okay? Simple stuff, guys. You know, this is simple, and it's fun. And it's a lot of fun. I put that in my bag here. Now you got lentils, rice, and chicken bouillon. I'm going to put it in my little time machine. <laughs> there you go. There's enough rice and uh, and lentils in there with the bouillon. You mix it all together. You throw the bouillon in there, right? You can feed a couple of people on this one pack. All right. So there you go. Simple stuff. Doesn't take a college degree to do it. All right, guys and girls. What have we learned here today? That prepping is really simple, all right? Having a little bit of emergency to put back and everything is a simple thing to achieve, right? What do we make? We made a little dinner pack in case of emergency. We made some comfort food, like a uh, hot cocoa, right? We made a nice, delicious oatmeal pack with bananas, apples, powdered milk, and everything else, right? We uh, we dehydrated some uh, apples. I mean, <laughs> apples. Here I go again with the apples and bananas, mixing them up. It's apples and bananas. All right, we made some uh, apple chips. We made some banana chips, right? 
it's real simple. It, you know, don't get stressed out. Like I said, I'm going to start slow with you guys, right? And what you have learned here is that, you know, we're not talking about end of the world stuff. We're talking about a disaster. If something happens and you need to rely on, on this food, right? It's there for you. You have that comfort knowing that you have some stuff put back. When all the supermarkets are being overrun, you can sit back and laugh and eat some good stuff, right? And most of all, even if you don't use it, if you have a family member in need or a neighbor that might need something, or even a friend or somebody you even you somebody you don't even know that you know is in a bad area, you could go and drop some of this stuff off to them, right? So what I'm going to show you, actually, let's sit down and talk. But like, here you go. Look at all that stuff. You're a prepper now. And this is the basic, really basic stuff, and you could survive for a million years on this alone. All right, but we can get a little fancier from vegetables and some other stuff, and we will get there. Let's just take it slow, get this stuff made. If you feel comfortable just making this and put it away, you'll be all right. You might get sick of lentils and rice after a while and oatmeal, but hey, at least your stomach's full, right? But I'm going to show you how to make other things and different things too when we get more into it. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you on this one, all right? We got our little packs, ready to survive. I'm ready to go. Let's bug out. Let's bug out. <laughs> anyway, it was simple. All right, so uh, I showed you how to make these couple little packs. So get to it. Start following your instructions. Do your homework. If uh, I hope you guys ordered a dehydrator and a vacuum sealer to get you started. And remember, vacuum sealers and dehydrators are not only for the apocalypse. Right there, you could save tons of money, and I'll go into all that stuff. You could vacuum seal flashlights, batteries, anything you want, anything you want to keep safe and uh, and uh, out of harm's way in case there's a flood, you know, because then you make it water resistant or waterproof. You put a radio in here, it's waterproof. Anyway, my next urban survival thing is going to be about. I'm going to go from this, right, and now I'm going to show you how to set up a little emergency kitchen area in your kitchen and how to cook all this stuff. And we're going to get into talking about water, too. Water is very important, so dink water. So we're going to talk about water and how to, uh, how to store water in a, in a small environment. But I'm going to store, and I want to go into how we're going to store all your food after you make a month supply, three month supply, right? If you want to make a year supply, that's all up to you. Whatever you feel more comfortable with, right? But start off with a month supply. Just worry about a month right now. Focus on a month, right? And we'll get into making some more fancy meals and everything. Like I said, this is urban survival for the newbie. I don't want to go too fast, all right? I'm not saying you guys can't learn, right? I just like going slow because I find it Amusing and fun. All right, guys, so live for today, prep for tomorrow, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.